everybody. My name is John and I'm from customer operations at easybusypets.com. Uh, today I'm going to give you a quick presentation on our software solution from Easy Busy Pets. I've tailored it a bit for the grooming industry. And so we start a demonstration with the uh, pet owner customer experience and how they might uh, request appointments from your services list. Um, in front of me is a mobile phone. It's, uh, it happens to be an iPhone, but your customers, you and your workers, if you want to give your workers access to anything, uh, can access services online through the solution using any internet enabled device. That could be a tablet or a PC. The pet owner, uh, her name is Stephanie, just for reference, because you're going to see her name flying around everywhere. It wants to make an online booking for one of her dogs. And um, your web app will be on her device. That would be your web app, except it would be your logo and uh, your branding and whatever wording you want to show there on your customer's device. So she's going to go ahead and make an online booking. <coughs> All pet owners, uh, they have access to your services online through their own portal. Um, it could be, once again, on any internet enabled device, but since we're using an iPhone, I'll use that as an example. Your branding, of course, would be here instead of my own. I'm using my personal demo from my company, Easy Busy Pets, and that's why you're seeing what you're seeing. But otherwise, it would be uh, based on your design. Uh, this customer, she has quick links and she has pets. In her case, she has three dogs and one cat. Also, she has invoices and upcoming appointments and other interesting things. I use her in a lot of my demonstrations, so you might see certain services that don't necessarily apply to your industry as well. Um, I'm going to make an online booking for Button the Pet Dog. Um, and when I do my demonstrations, Easy Busy Pets is not just for grooming salons and mobile grooming. It's also used by other pet industries um, like daycare and resorts that also have baths and things like that. Uh, trainers use this, dog walkers and sitters use this, this solution, boarding uses it. So there's a lot on my list here, but it's just based on my demonstrations in the past, grooming being one of them. Um, I'm gonna choose dog grooming today, and I have a bunch of services that I use in my demonstrations and others that folks have asked me to insert. For example, self-serve bays or other kinds of add-ons that you might see here. Your business will be completely unique to you, so please keep in mind that these are just example services that I've added here. I'm gonna book a bath and fluff, and Stephanie wants to book it, um, let's say, uh, for tomorrow, the Friday the 10th at some time, uh, let's say at 3 p.m. What's happening here is a feature that um, works really well in the grooming industry. Uh, the way this service is designed, is designed to behave is that there's a team of 10 people and only uh, five groomers are actually available to do, the, to do the job on the 10th at 3 p.m. Amongst those five, two of them are actually capable of doing a bath and fluff for a medium dog. And that's why only those two are showing up. If you're wondering whether availability needs to be turned on, it doesn't. It could be turned off. You can even control whether people uh, can visualize the different uh, staff that you have on site or not to make their selections. And every time in the day might offer different people. If nobody's available to do the job and you have availability turned on, well, then it would be grayed out. The client can't choose times that are simply not available to them based on your calendar system. There's also multiple day bookings. I won't focus on that today because um, based on your industry in the grooming industry, um, typically it's a one-off every time they book, maybe once every few months they come in, uh, just a guess. Um, above this, so this is an online booking. Uh, uh, every online booking requires some information, right? When do you want it? What kind of service do you want? For which pets would you like it done? Um, and are there any extra add-ons? Here are some questions that you might want them to answer, that sort of thing. Agree to cer certain policies like cancellation. There's even deposits and partial deposits in the system. Uh, and so above it is just a, a status window. This is what gets filled out as, as the customer fills things out in the booking. Uh, it's usually on the left side of a larger screen. So here we go. Uh, button was selected. Uh, right now, this groom has no capacity settings. You can 
restrict the customer from only choosing one of their pets at a time, for example. So I'm going to keep it within that spirit. This happens to be a service for a grooming salon. So there's a solid location here. It's not like you're doing mobile grooming for this particular service that I set up. We have mobile groomers and grooming salons using this solution all over the United States, um, Canada, UK, Europe, Australia. Uh, and so I'm just showing you an example of where a salon would have an application. Now, um, it, is a, it is a bath and fluff, um, but it looks like there's a deposit policy. And this is just what somebody um, from another grooming business asked me to add as a custom field. So it can be very, very elaborate here. You can ask all kinds of questions, um, enforce certain vaccinations, um, that sort of thing, behavioral questions, whatever makes sense, you can add here as part of the request to book an appointment. Furthermore, there's add-ons here that the customer can add. Now, Easy Busy Pets is a platform. It's highly configurable. And so this is just one of several variations. And I've worked with hundreds of businesses, thousands of businesses actually in the pet care industry. So this is just one of many in, in terms of best practices. Um, pet owner will request. And as you can see, the manager of this test business, it's just a fake business, it's not real, it's just for demonstrations, has decided that they want the pet owner to agree to a deposit policy. You might have all kinds of things like cancellation depo uh, policies, uh, vaccination policies, maybe late uh, or late pickup or you know holiday extra fees, that sort of thing. The request has gone to the business. Depending on your grooming business, you might want it to operate in such a way that only the manager can accept and assign jobs, or you might want to make it in such a way that your the the individual worker that should be assigned or has been requested for is automatically given the power to make the choice to accept the job or not. You see, we have different types of grooming businesses. Some of them have sort of that 1099 structure. Others are uh, full-time staff, others are third-party contractors. There's all kinds of scenarios. And so there's over 50 permission controls on what happens um, to the appointment and how your in employees can work with it once the request goes out. So today we're going to squ uh, switch over to the uh, uh, PC screen. And I'm going to show you how the same thing can be done on a personal computer as well as on a mobile phone. So that you know that whatever tools you have, you can work on them across, across any device and multiple devices simultaneously. Um, I'll just uh, turn this window away for a minute and I'm gonna switch to um, <coughs> the test website. Easy Busy Pets um, also gives groomers um, a website if they wanted to optionally as part of their solution. It's free hosting, uh, but if you don't want to, it'll tie nicely into your uh, business website if you currently have one. Um, just to give you a high level in terms of um, how our solution works, um, Easy Busy Pets addresses four different types of users. There's the general public, there's the pet owners. Pet owners, we actually saw a little bit of an example so far using the mobility. There's staff, so grooming staff, and then there's managers of the business. Um, potentially most of the folks that are watching this video right now. I'm going to show you the general public because that's kind of important to add context into how you receive this view as well. Um, if you do have a website with us, it's a standard website. Um, it uh, addresses the general public, but it's also smart. So if it knows who you are, it's going to give you access to things that the general public would not see. So generally, um, I'm going to show you um, the uh, demo website that supports uh, the solution. It's called PetCareDemo.com. It's a real website for a fake business. It's not a real business. Uh, if people come to your website and it's hosted by Easy Busy Pets and they're the general public, just you know, leads, they can still sign up to become your customer or book and that sort of thing. But if you're the manager of the business and it knows who you are, and you go to petcaredemo.com, if that's your .com, it's gonna take you straight to um, uh, essentially the manager view. So you see schedule, pets, clients, invoices, and also your dashboard. 
<laughs> now, the reason you see the website stuff here is because you're in full control of your website. You can actually edit it in real time. We're a full, uh, fully fledged website builder and you can build your site on our system um, and it integrates perfectly with the software and this free hosting, so why not? Um, but anyway, I digress a bit. I'm gonna go here to the scheduling view, which is the next part of my presentation. Now, um, we have all kinds of views. One of them is often most exclusively used by groomers. Um, when we look at a calendar, um, it's, it's the same information that's showing across different ways of looking at it. So we have a weekly view in front of you right now. These are my workers and these are their um, services. I'm just gonna narrow it down to dog grooming here. These are the services. Yellow is a request and green is something that's completed. This is not a typical view for the grooming industry. I'll show you which one is because we have two different types of daily agendas. But just to be complete, we have a monthly view, a room calendar if you're a kennel or a daycare operator with um, you know uh, special areas where you want to assign physical um, um, uh, physical capacities. Uh, five day view, agenda view is very typical for uh, sitters and dog walkers. Um, but then we have the daily view for groomers, which I'll get to in just a moment. Uh, we have a request here, it's yellow. It's gonna turn gray as soon as we accept it. Um, and why don't we do that now? I'm gonna left click on this job. The request comes from Stephanie, the customer. And um, just to explain to you what's happening here, Easy Busy Pets has electronic forms technology and Button has maybe three or four different documents. Um, someone behavior could be anything you want. And so out of those documents, I decided to uh, bring up front some of that information. And that's why you're seeing some details here under the, the names of the pet and under the customer. Anyway, um, as the manager of the business, I'm seeing what I'm seeing and I can accept or decline the job on behalf of the worker, Amanda, in this case. Um, I can also update the appointment, make changes, and in turn accept and uh, accept and uh, or propose the changes back to the uh, to the customer for them to accept. I'll accept it, and I promise I'll show you other other calendars in just a moment. But really, what I want to do is not just accept jobs that have been requested by the customer, but also book a few on my side as the manager of the business. So I'm going to find a few clients and do so. Maybe the first thing I wanna do is actually bring everything on Thursday the 9th. So this appointment is on the 10th. I'm gonna book a few uh, on both of these days just to show you some variation. John Atwater is a worker. He doesn't have any clients right now under him. So I'm gonna um, find a pet and book for him. Let's uh, book Beethoven, dog grooming. As the manager, I'm booking one of my grooming services on the 9th. Of course, I have a different view. I can access a lot more customer, uh, a lot more controls. I can choose advanced times. I can add reminders uh, because you can remind your customers or your staff in addition to what you defaulted. You can choose all kinds of business rules on when people should be notified that an appointment is upcoming. Anyway, I'll save that one for John. And maybe I'll book from a client this time. Last time I booked by pet, I'm gonna book Abby's Pets for a groom, maybe a bath and nail this time. Abby has two pets. I'm just gonna choose bubbles here for the ninth in the evening. I have all kinds of interesting options the way I've set up all these different services. It doesn't have to be a time. It could be range of time, it could be words. So I'm gonna book uh, Linda this time. Okay, and um, maybe I'll go back to my schedule here. So this is my weekly view. I have Linda for the ninth. I have um, I have Beethoven. I don't think I signed it to John yet. So let's set the staff to John. Check his availability. No conflicts. Okay, he's been updated that I added him. Um, 
And you know what? I just want to take this appointment for the simplicity and just also bring it to the ninth. And when you make changes like this to a different day, that's totally okay because the customer will get notified as well. I'm going to put it under Amanda. You have the power to uh, double book your workers if you want to. Although it's not recommended in grooming. Okay, so we have three different workers. John, Linda, and Amanda have stuff going on on the 9th. I'm going to switch over to that day on the 9th. And we have Amanda, John, and Linda. It looks like the bath and nail clip, it's going to run for nine, uh, from 5 to 9, so it's a four-hour job. And these ones are just one hour each. Uh, your design on how you want your services to behave both on the calendar as well as um, when they get built, built and invoiced. So yes, you can, you can narrow down by the worker. You can also narrow down by the type of work. So maybe you have multiple grooming salons throughout the city, and this could be a list of all the different salons and showing what's going on within each uh, just by narrowing down that information. You can select specific appointments that might be completely unrelated and do stuff. Uh, perhaps you might want to look for a specific pet. I know we have Beethoven here, so let's find him. Okay, so here's Beethoven and just Beethoven and what's going on with him for this day. It's similar options throughout the different types of views that you have. So if you want to see what's going on that month, for example, you can, and you can totally do that. What's starting today, what's ending today. So now um, let's, let's go back to the calendar here. Um, I want to compare what it looks like on a personal computer to what it looks like on a mobile mobile phone. It's the same thing. And so before I action on any of these jobs, that's the schedule calendar. This was the weekly view that you saw earlier. I'm looking at things as a manager and I'm gonna to switch to the daily view. And that's your outlook for the day of the 9th of April. My personal favorite is the agenda. Um, they all show here, Amanda would only see Amanda's, John would only see John's stuff, and Linda would only see hers because each of them have their own access. And I don't have to actually go into the appointment to action on it. I can check in. Let's say I was Linda and I'm checking in. It's now in progress. Just to draw a parallel, Linda's checked in. I can see as a manager that she started the job. Maybe Linda decides that she wants to take a photo. There's all kinds of things you can do. You can have an entire form here to fill out as you're doing the job, you being Linda in this scenario. But maybe Linda also wants to take a photo of bubbles. Now, um, these are part of the, the final report that may go to a customer. It depends on how you want to establish your information and how it's communicated to your customer. But maybe she's writing a quick note and then she's going to take a photo of the pet. The system's smart. Because it's on a mobile phone, it knows to take me straight to the camera. Now, I don't have my pet here to make a demonstration, so I'm going to use my, um, my daughter's toy. I think it's Zuma. All right, here we are. Okay, so it's a Paw Patrol toy, but hopefully it makes sense. You're making photos of the dog that you're making a cut, uh, you know, a haircut and a fluff or a bath. Um, every time you add a picture and or a note, um, your content is in combination with your uh, pet and that's who did it. So it wasn't Linda who did it, it was me who did it as the manager of the business. And that's why you see, um, you know, it, uh, my name versus Linda's name there. Um, you can do as many of these as you want. And when you check out of the job, um, the default, although you can turn it off, is to send out a report on everything that's been going on, what you've been filling out in the appointment, uh, what you've been updating it with. Um, even during the job, the worker, if you want them to be able to, both with permissions and without permissions, um, there's a, a share button. It's totally optional. Um, and 
this they use to communicate a partial report. So they'll, it'll give them the option of who to send it to, as well as the commentary. And it's uh, their commentary is sent with um, an uh, aggregation of everything that's been reported so far into the appointment that would go to the customer. And it can also go to you if you wanted to. But you don't even have to do any of those things to, uh, for the customer to be able to see what's going on so far. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So um, appointments happening so far. As the manager, I see that it's been updated so far by uh, Linda, the worker. Um, if I was a customer that wanted to see what's going on so far, but haven't gotten any updates from your team, um, I can go to my own dashboard as a customer. So customer goes to, let's say, your solution online on their PC versus their mobile phone. It doesn't matter. It could be any device. But let's say they're using a PC. So Stephanie's going to come on her PC instead of her mobile phone because it's just more convenient. Once again, she comes to her dashboard, Quick Links, Pets. She has three dogs and one cat. And um, the photos... The photos are basically here as they get updated. Um, now, Stephanie doesn't have that dog Zuma because it was actually Abby that got the, uh, the pet picture in there. So let's actually go and make an update for Stephanie, the customer. So which one is with Stephanie? Abby, there she is, okay. Now this job hasn't even started yet, but you can already add pictures and notes. You don't have to have pictures if you don't want to. All right. So this one's the top of the head of the dog. Haven't started the job yet. Maybe you're already sending a commentary of some sort, or maybe you're sending updates on how things are going. Add the note. There's the image. So I didn't actually share it with the customer. I didn't notify her, but here's the image. So Abby has a picture and now Stacy has a picture for her appointment. And your customers can always view these pictures, even if you didn't share with them. As long as you put it on their appointment, they'll be able to see it, unless you don't want them to. There's a setting to hide it. If your customer really likes what they see, they're gonna share it on Facebook. And they're gonna say something like, uh, oh my God, thank you so much for the beautiful um, wash and cut et cetera, et cetera. And they're gonna post it on their Facebook. So Stephanie is going to, Stephanie being the pet owner, she's gonna post it on her Facebook. And um, let's see what that looks like. Let's presume for a second that you and I are friends and family and colleagues of your pet owner, pet, uh, Stacy. Um, um, Stephanie, that is. Um, if we like what uh, we see and we happen to have pets as well and want our pets to also be taken care of so well, um, we'll also click on this. Um, now, petcaredemo.com is your .com and that would be your business. They'll click on it and these leads of yours would arrive on your services page where they can sign up to become your customer, learn more about you, or maybe book a groom. These are just general options that I created over time. And that's how social organic marketing works. You just make pictures and um, those pictures work for you to bring you new customers uh, through the social channel. I'm gonna move back to the daily view. So it's running, it's running, and now let's end it. So this is the one for Stephanie. They can just complete the job, that's one scenario, or they can 
let's look at the one for Abby, the customer Abby. They can check that one out and then it would be the same as completing it. So I've checked it out. Um, customer may or may not be notified. It depends on your settings and how you want their notifications to go out. Um, and now it's a complete appointment, it's completed. Let's see what it looks like on the manager's view. Okay, now it's green. And Linda, Linda can now start another job, for example. Um, how to bill. We have two examples today on how to bill. One is to do prepayments, uh, so deposits. Another is post payment. Uh, we have a lot of automation around this as well, but I'll try to keep it simple for the purposes of this presentation. This job hasn't started yet. It is one that I added pictures to, but I haven't started it yet. So in fact, I can deposit uh, some money from the customer before I start. Generating the bill is as easy as just going into the appointment and clicking invoice. I'll just do that one more time. Click that. One of the options is to bill. When you do so, uh, of course, you can also add on a few items like, um, well, I don't have much in my sample set, but you know, you might have SKUs for collars or food or shampoo or whatever, and you can add that as part of the bill. I'll add a t-shirt for today. When you create the bill, it retires the fact that Stephanie needs to be billed for this, uh, for this job. Um, you can charge credit cards or bank accounts this way. So in this case, I have a real credit card here. You can choose to charge only partial amounts like $20 instead of the full $70 amount. You can also mark it as paid if they paid you with cash or check. Let's partially get ourselves paid with tip, partial tip of course, for just $20 out of the 70. What does that do? Well, that reduces the fact that they owe you 70 to $50 and you have a deposit. It could have been by credit card or bank transfer uh, as well through this system. It's all integrated and it, it, it keeps track of how much partial payments were made. You can, you can make as many different partial payments as you like and source them from different ways of payment, including credit cards, bank transfers, um, um, cash or check or barter course amount paid, which would be included so far, amount owing, it's all part of the system. There's actually partial refunds as well. So this job now has a bill attached to it. It hasn't even started yet, but the deposit is there, the partial amount of $20 that we just did. This job, I decided not to, not to get any deposits but it's still the same process. So here's the job for another pet and I can create that bill. And this is a form of post payment now instead of prepayment. And in this case, you probably wanna mark it the full amount is paid. In this case, I'm doing it by cash. If they paid you with credit card, it would say pet paid by credit card and so on and so forth. If you go to invoices page here, I have a list of all the bills I uh, generated in the past. I've demonstrated 2,365 bills on this demo alone. You can narrow by date. You can see its state. It's a very mature system. I can actually see what my customer Zelda owes me, although I could just go to her profile and find out the same information. There's uh, business analytics. And then there's another uh, very powerful tool this might be useful to you. It's more commonly used by uh, sitters and dog walkers and folks who have a lot of post payments. But if you click this, it'll actually tell you who owes you money. Choose any date range, even in the future. I have a thousand clients in my system, but if there's something that I did for one or more of them that I haven't billed them for yet, their names will appear here. And I just click on their names and it'll tell me what that is. Once I bill William this way, maybe market is paid as well. The man
magic happens. So here's William, that's his bill for $50. He's not gonna show up again because everything he owes me has been retired. The system knows if there's anything in the calendar that's been, uh, that's either upcoming or has been uh, serviced um, and it cross references whether it's been billed for or not and tells you otherwise. So Stephanie does owe me something up to May 22nd. I just chose some random date. You could charge people in the future. In fact, I can go to clients, I can find Stephanie. And invoice her. She doesn't owe me anything up till today's date. But if I choose till June set and uh, June sixth or uh, June tenth, that is, here are all the items in the future that I haven't uh, serviced her for yet. But I can bill bill it for uh, bill it right now, and even set up the deposit for it instead of the full hundred percent amount. Your dashboard gives you power to set up your team. It gives you the controls to set up custom forms and custom fields within those forms for your clients and pets. You can have a very elaborate set of documents, uh, service agreements, veterinary forms, behavioral reports, um, grooming uh, documentation of all kinds. Your staff as well, as well as your appointments can have their own custom forms during booking and while running the job. Staff is uh, very important in the grooming industry. There's payroll. Payroll gives you a report per worker for whatever range of dates of how much they're owed. Each worker also has access to their own personal report. You set this up based on service. It's by either by percent or nominal amounts. And each item refer, reverts you, refers you back to the actual appointment uh, to learn more about it. And it summarizes the total time and amount that's owed. Tips. Tips can be paid by your customer even after they paid the bill. It could be months after. So it's kind of a separate thing. Permissions is a very powerful part of our solution. Each worker has over 50 permissions given to them by you across scheduling, billing, pets, clients, and managing each other. Availability, that ties into when they can be booked for work during the week. Now, that's one dimension. Each of these workers, if I look at their profiles, I can actually set which services they're capable of doing because not every groomer is the same as the next one. Uh, some of them are more experienced. Some of them can do the job faster. Um, some of them can't do certain work at all because maybe their back hurts or something. And you know, maybe big dogs is not something that they can handle, just as an example. So um, there's a lot of control in terms of how you can manage your team in this system, including not giving them any control at all if that's what you wish. That concludes a high level introduction of uh, Easy Busy Pets and how it might apply to a grooming business. Uh, just to add before I finish off, um, I did create this link up top uh, just for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, often, especially in the grooming industry, grooming businesses set up um, an extra page called Book Now and they list like, sort of like a menu uh, by size of dog, uh, hair length, and other parameters. <coughs> and this applies to cats and other animals as well. And then when folks click, uh, folks being pet owners, click on a specific service, it takes them straight into booking that service. And um, just wanted to put it out there that's uh, becoming a little bit of a trend with easy, busy pets and mobile groomers and grooming salons. So that concludes things. If you do have questions uh, or feel like uh, reaching out, please do so. Our website is easybusypets.com and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again and have a great day.